Hello, hello, and welcome back to uh, video five of my RimWorld tutorial video series. Um, thank you for joining me today. And uh, where we left off last time is we got the bedrooms up. Um, I think I forgot to mention, but if you look here now on their needs, they slept in an awful bedroom. If you remember, an awful barracks was a minus seven. Now we've gotten to an awful bedroom, which is a minus four. So still minus, but basically we gained plus three mood, uh, uh, plus three mood bonus by just switching to the bedrooms. And once we get a, you know, a dresser in, once we get it floored and they're clean, uh, it'll probably be at least a decent uh, bedroom. And that will, I believe, give a, 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 bon a bonus of plus one or at least a, a zero, um, a zero uh, buff. So uh, it'll, it'll all zero out. We also, at the end of last uh, video, finally got some production up. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about doing work at a production bench and what's involved and some things you want to consider. Um, so this is going to be our workshop. So again, last video, we moved our item storage to be uh, across from the workshop because you're going to be wanting to uh, grab materials very quickly, and uh, and you're not going to want your pawn to be uh, moving back and forth a whole bunch and spending most of their time walking. I'm going to actually reinstall the uh, hoops, the horseshoe ring over here, so they have more access to it and there's more areas where they can play with it. Because right now they can only play from it from those five spots, which is plenty, but um, when we start building up the more... Uh, I think it'll be better for it to be there. Okay, um, so uh, when it comes to production, uh, so the game uh, is really good about incorporating so many factors into what uh, you know what makes a pawn do something, a colonist do something, uh, you know, effectively and quickly. So. If it makes sense to you in real life, it probably is affecting the, the pawn in this game. So uh, a pawn likes to be comfortable when they're working. They like to be in a clean environment. They like to be well lit. So if they're working in the dark, they'll work slower and worse. If everything is dirty around them, they'll work slower and worse. And if they're outside and not comfortable, they'll work slower and worse. So how do you make sure you do that? Well, now that we have Anessa has a plus uh, of four to construction, she can now make a dining chair. Normally, I would make stools because stools take up way less wood and are easier to build, and anyone can build them, and it's easier to make a nicer one. But even a worse dining table, uh, dining chair, it like a poor dining chair, still gives more comfort than let's say a, a good stool. Don't quote me on that. Uh, but I believe that's I believe that's true. Like even a normal stool won't be as good as a poor dining chair. So I'm going to put a dining chair. If you need, you can look. If you have a production bench, you can see where the chair should go. You can totally put a stool here, and I do recommend that um, for starting off uh, and just the ease. But I'm going to just cut straight to what I want to do, which is put a dining table. So that's going to help their increase their. Uh, comfort um, when they sit at that bench. I'm also going to want to make sure this is all very well lit. So uh, as soon as possible, I'm going to put in a lamp here. Lamps are in furniture, and they only take 20 steel to make. They don't take any components, which is great. Um, oh, look, she botched that construction. Yay! And it'll automatically connect to the nearest uh, um, source of energy. Uh, and it is on. You can see that it is being powered because our windmill that we got up last video is up and running. And it's not even blocked by that little tree, but I'm going to cut it down just in case uh, it gets bigger. Um, and do we still, we still need more wood. So we're going to cut a lot more wood. Chop wood. Chop over here. 
All right, now that we have our, it's not roofed yet, so we probably shouldn't move everything over here yet, but, ah, okay. This happens once you've survived a few days in a spot, they'll ask you to name your, um, the colony, the specific site, and also what your faction is called. Um, so you can always randomize this if you don't care. I like to give a lot of thought into, um, into my faction and, and stuff, but, and the story behind it, because uh, that's what's really fun for me for the purposes of this. Um, uh, let's see, this is kind of our tutorial, so we'll say the, the teacher, our faction name is Te the Teachers of the Rim. Oh, geez, looks like my downstairs neighbor's kid is crying a whole bunch. Um, you might not be picking that up on mic, but it is it's intense. Um, okay, the teachers of the rim. I have a soft spot for teachers. Um, and we'll call this uh, Classroom 1. It's going to be the name of our settlement. Okay, well, there you go. We are now the teachers of the rim. That really doesn't come up until you go to world. Uh, every time you reload the game, you'll have to reload the world. Um, but now you can see that our, our colony is called Classroom 1, and this is where we are in the scheme of the world. And all other settlements have a name. So the faction is the Rexios Pact. Ooh, thrombos. Cool, I'll talk about them in a second. But the settlement is called Kuro Grassland. So anyway, so we are now the teachers of the rim, and this is our Classroom 1. All right, getting out of there. Rare thrombos, so this is an event that can pop up. Um, thrombos, um, ooh, I just closed that thing, and I want to know where those thrombos are at. I can always go to wildlife and find the thrombos on this but if, and, and double click and it will take me to them. But uh, if I didn't want to do that, you can always go to the message. And since I closed the message before doing what I wanted on it, you can always come back here to History and go to Messages, and I'll show you any message or event that popped up over here. It'll show you what happened. Here, a small herd of thrombos have wandered into the area. Peaceful by nature, these rare creatures are extremely dangerous when confronted. That is true. So you can also jump to the location. Usually when anything happens, you can always jump to the location. So these are thrombos. Thrombos are awesome. They're basically the dragons of this uh, world. Um, they are ancient, they, uh, like this one's actually only 36 years old, but they can become hundreds of years old. This one is 96 years old. Uh, so they're these kind of, they're very old living creatures. They are intelligent. Uh, they are grazers. They just eat trees. They, they're, um, what's it called? Uh, they can eat trees, so they're, what's the arbivores? I, I, I'm now blanking on the word for when uh, things eat trees. But anyway, uh, they can eat trees uh, and they eat grass, so they won't, they won't bother you. They are considered intelligent creatures. They won't bother you. They actually, they're very hard to tame because they require a handling skill, an animal skill of 10 to even try to interact with them. Um, so this early on in the game, we're basically going to ignore them. But... If you tamed them, which they're very hard to tame, and they take up a lot of food, they eat a whole bunch, but luckily they eat trees, so as long as you're in a well-wooded area, it's fine. Um, but they are great creatures to have on your side because they are tough as heck. They will um, destroy pretty much anything that isn't armored, and uh, they're, yeah, they're basically dragons. They're very hard to kill. Um, that being said, if you didn't want to tame them, and usually it's more trouble than it's worth to tame them, you could totally hunt these things. The problem is, uh, they, if you go to um, Thrombos, they have a 100% chance of turning hostile if you try to hunt them. So the second they get hit by a bullet, uh, they will turn on you. Uh, most creatures have a chance of uh, attacking you if you attack them, but uh, it is not a very high percentage. Usually 10% is the highest. But 
Thrombos are 100% will attack you, so if you fight them, you're going to fight. Uh, however, they only have a 1.3% chance of turning hostile if you try to tame them. So they don't mind being courted and tamed. We just can't do that because we don't have the animal skill for it. Uh, and, but we are not in a position to take these on. But normally you would maybe want to kill both of these because uh, their horns alone like sell for 800 silver. And then they make thrumble fur, which is one of the best materials to craft, you know, uh, clothing or, or materials out of thrumbo fur. It, and it's also very valuable. Um, thrumbo meat, they give a lot of meat, but the meat isn't any more valuable than any other animal meat. So that's not a big deal. They're probably going to hang out around here. And, you know, they might end up eating our plants, which would be unfortunate. But um, uh, we don't have it. Um, fenced off. Usually you would fence off your your plants. We're going to end up fencing off the whole colony, so hopefully that'll get rid of, you know, once we get rid of all the animals that are inside of our colony, once we have it roped off, then, you know, nothing will be able to get in unless they try to break down. Um, so I'm actually going to build a copy of this light, put it in here. Oop, not going to put it right in the middle. We'll copy and we'll put it right next to that. And I'm going to reinstall this in a more central location. Reinstall this. Reinstall this. Reinstall this there. And so then I won't have to reinstall that because then it'll still be sharing with that chess table. Um, good. They're building this. I do want, let's see if I can get Maxi to finish. Just want them to finish this wall so that it is now a roofed area. So now we can have distinct item zones. Yay! So I'm going to go to zone, going to go to stockpile zone. Boom. All right. So when setting a zone storage, uh, think about what you want in here. So doesn't. Don't need to worry too much about these top two bars. Uh, that's for later on. We don't need to worry about fresh or rotten. I guess we don't want rotten things, but nothing that will be rotten or fresh will even go in here. I'm going to turn off foods. We're going to turn off manufactured. No, sorry, we want manufactured. We're going to turn off foods. We're going to turn off some raw resources, meaning plant matter. And we definitely don't want corpses. But everything else is free game here. And that's good. And the priority will be, this will be our preferred storage zone for those items. This is going to be for food. So we're going to clear all. And we're going to be just for food. And anything that can deteriorate if not refrigerated. So that also means some plant matter. It also means... Herbal medicine is the only medicine that will go off if not refrigerated, but it takes like two years to go off. So it's not a huge deal. Um, so we're going to allow herbal medicine in here and in here. Um, but we're going to make this a... We're going to make this important. It's important that this goes in here. The other thing we want in here besides food and um, herbal medicine and plant material is corpses. And not every corpse, we just want animal corpses. And then, final thing is we do not want anything rotten in here. And if it's a rotten corpse, we don't care about it. We go elsewhere. Alright, so that means whenever we go hunting, the hunter will then take that corpse and put it in here, and it will be really close to where we're going to have our butcher, butcher and our cooking area set up. Um, Okay, I'm going to keep speeding things along. Uh, we do want some... We just want some light in here. It's not super important, but we don't want every time they're getting items to be in the dark because they don't like being in the dark. And we want to keep them as happy as possible. Remember, their needs, uh, that comfort and beauty and being outdoors, you can try to make this as high as possible, as much as possible, by increasing the beauty of all your rooms. Uh, she failed, so she's going to have to do it again. 
Um, increasing the beauty of all your rooms. Uh, we'll keep that up. And then planting flowers outside or having statues outside as well will also keep that beauty up even when they're outside. Because outside tends to be not pretty um, and good. You're getting to plant growing in Nessa. That's awesome. Is your, are you my main planter too? Well, as my, yeah, you are. Okay. Yeah, so you're going to construct and you're also going to grow. That's all good. Okay. We do want more wood. So again, you can see how much wood you need early on. But now that we have uh, some production up, we're going to set some builds. Okay. So now let's talk about these productions. So you notice we got these up and they've been up for almost a day now, but no one's doing anything at them because we haven't set a bill. Research is different. You set your research here in the research tab. We've already set we want to make a battery. We want that as quick as possible. So I'm going to look at who is my researcher, Guillermo. I'm turning you off of plant duty, Guillermo. And you're going to go to uh, research as your number one priority. So he will spend all of his day doing that. And Nessa, before you finish that uh, roof, I want you to finish making this chair so Guillermo is as comfortable as possible uh, doing that. Come on. Good chair, good chair, good chair. You want this to be one of your best chairs because your researcher, kind of like your cook, is usually going to be doing research most of the time. Oh, okay, so our first negative thing has happened. Okay, it's a normal chair. That's fine. Okay, so this is a random event, a psychic drone. Um, sometimes it can be a psychic suit. Sometimes this can be a positive thing. But right now, a drone is a bad thing. It's low, so it's a low-intensity drone, and it's affecting our females. So Anessa and Maxi are now just, by default, going to get a minus 12. Maxi, it's not that big of a deal because, again, she's sanguine and iron-willed, so it just cancels out that sanguine um, buff that she gets. Um, so it's, you know, now she, her mood's more average. But Anessa, we're going to have to keep an eye on. All right, look, this is bad. She's already going to about to dip into the minor break risk. So we want to make sure that she gets some good things up and going as soon as possible. So... Where is Maxie's, Maxie's room? So she already has an end table. Let's get Anessa to work on that wooden dresser. Hopefully it'll work on that wooden dresser before Maxie goes to bed. Oh, Maxie's going to bed. Okay, so we're actually going to cancel that. The reason for that is um, if you are walking in the same room as someone is uh, sleeping, they'll get disturbed sleep, which is only a minus one debuff, but it can stack, and Maxie is so on the brink that, you know, she has the bedroom she has for tonight. That's not going to be helped. Um, oh, sorry. I'm thinking... Ugh, I was thinking of Anessa. So, Anessa. We want to keep Anessa happy. So, Anessa... We can actually do that. Anessa, build your dresser before you go to sleep. Um, when you queue up an action... If it's just building something, it's not that big of a deal. But they will do that until that task is complete. And so if you have them working on something like, let's say, cooking, and you have the bill set to do forever, uh, they will start doing that forever uh, because it will never end. Um, uh, let's see if that helped your room. It is still an awful room because we want to get this roofed as quickly as possible. So. Uh, just let's go to the allow. I don't think this actually works here. Yeah, no, that's just for items. Um, all right, so we're just going to drag and drop. I'm just going to systematically collect all of these and allow. Ooh, all right, um, sorry, got off on a tangent. Anyway, research is set through the research tab. You just click what you want and hit research. You can switch at any time. So if this is a 12 progress, you can now switch to carpet making and hit research, and they will go to, to carpet making. You can only research one thing at a time. 
but you could have multiple research benches open and multiple researchers researching that. So you can have many people researching that one thing and it will go much, click, much quicker, but again, uh, you can only re be researching one thing. I'm sure there are mods that will change that, but I do not mess with those kinds of mods. Um, okay, but on a normal production bench, this is what you do. So you're going to click on that bench, and then you're going to hit Bills. And this is where you can see all the things you can do at that production bench, and then you can set some uh, regulations for it. So as soon as possible, we're going to want some... We're going to want to turn this wood stuff into marble. So, and we have a lot of marble lying around. So we're going to say, make marble blocks. That's what we want to do at this bench. We're eventually going to queue up a bunch of things to do. So let's say maybe make uh, granite blocks. If you don't care about the type of blocks, you can make any stone blocks and then I'll just make sure they make any. Uh, but right now, when you put it, it'll just be, they're going to make one, one uh, marble block or one set of marble blocks, which I think is like 20. Make 20 in a go. We're going to go to details and change this. Instead of doing so many times, we're going to say do until you have so many marble blocks. I don't want them to be doing this forever, but I do want them to be doing it uh, enough so that we have enough blocks. So right now, I'm just going to do it so it's 200. Uh, so they will make marble blocks until they hit two marble, 200 marble blocks. I'm going to then tell them to pause, and then they're going to unpause once we're down to, let's say, 50 marble blocks, we want them to start making blocks again until they get back up to 200. If you don't have this clicked, um, I believe anytime this dips below 200, they will make it. So they'll keep it at 200 and they won't pause. Uh, they'll only pause when it's at 200. So the second that a marble block is used, then they'll go back to this bench. I don't want that. I want them to do it when they have 50. The other big thing, especially important when you're doing um, uh, stone cutting, but is important for other benches as well, is the ingredient radius. What this means is uh, how far away from that bench are they going to look for the, th for the ingredients they knew need to do this bill. So for making marble blocks, what they need is a marble chunk. So how far will they look for a marble chunk? Well, it's usually set to unlimited which is fine for right now because they'll always go to the nearest one and we have tons of marble chunks nearby. But eventually when these chunks go away, uh, they might go to the very edge of the map in order to find that, that marble block. And I don't want them doing that because A, that's a lot of time wasted walking, but also B, uh, they could be stranded out there when a raid happens, and now they're way far away from our base, and they're pretty much uh, not going to survive that, especially if the raid happens near them. Uh, so that you don't want your pawns to get in that position where they're way far away from the base when stuff goes down. Uh, the only ones that might do that are hunters, and usually hunters are pretty good at fighting, so you can kind of fudge it a little bit. But So we're going to turn this radius down and... It'll show you, if I was zoomed out, I can't zoom out right now, but if I was zoomed out a little bit more, and I go to this details, it'll show you the kind of size of uh, where it's getting from. And I want it, let's keep it right about in there. That's about the colony size. And so you can go anywhere within that radius is fine. Um, and then here they'll do the uh, top bill first and then go to the bottom bill. And they'll do the top bill until it's either satisfied or there's no ingredients in the restrictions that you've set. And then they'll go on to the next one. So they'll do marble blocks until they can't do it for whatever reason. And then they'll go on to granite blocks. Uh, for granite blocks, I'm going to do the same. I'm going to say do until you have. Go to details. Do until you have 200. Uh, pause when satisfied unpause at 50. And again, I'm going to set that radius to uh, right about there. Close. Okay. So now we want to think about if they're going to be grabbing these blocks. Well, there's already chunks nearby, but it's probably good to set up a stockpile. We're going to set up a stockpile zone right here. I'm going to put it right here. 
And we're going to set this to be just for chunks. Uh, so I'm going to clear all and I'm going to do chunks. And chunks by default means stone chunks or steel slag. Steel slag is uh, here. Here's an example of it. It's just kind of scrap metal that's around. Uh, it could be around for a lot of reasons. This is probably around from our drop pods that we crashed in. Uh, you can eventually smelt that down into steel, but you need a smelter first. I usually don't make a smelter this early on because uh, steel is fairly plentiful uh, when you start off with either through mining or deconstructing ruins made of steel. Um, which I'm sure, yeah, see this ruin here is steel, so it's actually much quicker instead of mining to walk all this way and do uh, deconstruct that steel. Um, yeah, so that's kind of the basics of builds. So for tailoring, I'm gonna show you what I do we do not have any way to tailor right now, uh, but this is how I set up my bills for tailoring. It's, uh, again, colonists do not like to be in tattered clothing, which is clothing that is below 50%, and they do not like uh, to be naked, unless they're a nudist, which is a trait. Uh, so uh, they want something that covers their whole body. That either means a, a simple thing like a tribal wear consider, is considered like an outfit. It covers your top and bottom. Uh, but if they're wearing um, a t-shirt and they don't have any pants on, uh, it, they'll get an unhappy nudity debuff. Um, uh, so we want to make sure that they have plenty of clothing. So what I do when I'm setting up my tailor bench is this. I always make... Uh, I used to make t-shirts, but button-down shirts are actually technically a little bit better, uh, and that is because uh, a button-down t-shirt uh, covers a lot more area of your um, body. Uh, it's not a big deal. You know, it doesn't provide <laughs> that much uh, armor. You're not really wearing t-shirts or button-down shirts for the armor benefit, but they do have a little bit of armor benefit. Uh, so you might as well make button-down t-shirts and uh, pants. We will eventually want to make dusters. That's a great all-round um, clothing option, especially if you make it out of good material. Um, and it helps with heat and, and um, temperature um, displacement. If you want, if you're in a cold environment, you want to make parkas. If you're in kind of a warmer environment, make dusters. If you're in a temperate environment, I would make dusters. That's my, that's my preference, and I think some of the mechanics work out for why that is. Um, but yeah, anyway. Um, so what I do is I set my details to do until you have, and I do it until I have as many colonists as there are in my colony. So do until you have three. So I want to make sure there is at least three button down t-shirts. Uh, and what do I mean by three? Well, I want you to count the ones that are on their body, not the ones in storage, all in my whole colony, I want you to count the, uh, the equipped button-down t-shirts. I don't want you to count the tainted ones. Tainted means it came from a corpse. Uh, you stripped it from a corpse. And we'll talk more about that at a different time. Uh, and I also want you to only consider ones that are of 52% and above. Uh, the reason for this is once it gets down to 51%, the colonist is going to take it off, and uh, and uh, then uh, not be happy. So I want it to start making. I want them to start making the T-shirt at 52 percent. Uh, so once it gets down to 51 percent, uh, they'll they'll start making it. Right. So only count 52 percent, uh, and I don't want to pause when satisfied. I want it to always be up to three when it can be. Um, and I only want it to count normal or higher quality. So if they end up making a poor button down t-shirt, make it again. And for right now, I'm gonna allow anything, but we don't have anything, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, and the radius again, this one is not as important because usually there won't be tailoring uh, ingredients uh, that are outside your base. There won't just be random like cloth outside your base unless it was arrived from drop pods or something like that. Um, 
but just for the sake of consistency, I'm going to hit the radius to be no more than 40. Uh, and then this is also important. So uh, if you want to restrict the skill of someone that's working on a bench so that you only want your best worker to do it, um, you can either set a specific worker to do it. So like we could say only Anessa makes the clothing or this button down t-shirt. Or you can say only workers that have a skill of six or higher. Because I know that if they, it's usually around skill level eight for most skills that you're considered fairly competent and will more likely than not make at least a normal level or higher than normal quality item. Um, so usually I would set this, but since we have no one who has a skill higher than two, uh, then it's not a big deal and they're not going to be able to make this stuff anyway. But I'm just showing you how I usually set up my bills. And then I do the same thing for pants. Again, do until you have as many people as we have in the colony. I want you to count equipped. Uh, look everywhere. Only count 52% and higher and only normal to legendary. And look, we already have that satisfied. It's noticed that three people have pants on, so it doesn't need to make any. Uh, set my radius to something like that, and we're good. Um, so that's pretty much how you do bills on most production benches. And um, once we get our stove up, which will probably be next video, um, I'll show you how, uh, how I handle that as well. Um, just want to make sure we did set this for raw food. Good. Raw food is all the vegetation, and so once this uh, rice comes in, which the stuff that is almost in, so you can see how quickly rice grows. Uh, they only planted that like a couple days ago, um, and the corn hasn't even been fully planted, uh, but the ones that even have been, you know, are going to take a lot longer to, it's going to take over a week, probably eight days or something. It actually tells you growing time 11.3 days, and that's, I think, assuming normal um, normal conditions and normal soil. So hopefully we'll get it a little bit quicker than that. It's also dependent on the light. So if there's an eclipse, they won't be growing. They won't be growing at night. But right now, their growth rate right now is 140%. 140% as it gets lower and the, the, the sun gets lower in the sky, this will go down until eventually when it's dark out, this will not be growing at night. Also temperature affects it as well. Uh, let's see how Anessa is doing with this. So she's in an awful bedroom still, and that drone is hurting her, but she's at least a little bit above the uh, minor uh, break risk. Ah, we got a merchant. Our first merchant is coming in. So we will leave that to next time, uh, and I'll talk about trading with uh, wandering merchants. I'll also talk about how you can caravan and trade, although I won't do it yet because we don't have the means to caravan yet. Um, and we'll get cooking up and running and probably get, do some hunting next video. Uh, but anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, I love your comments and questions. Please interact uh, in the comments section uh, and help me to improve these videos for you. I want to know what you are interested in so I can make um, content that is relevant to my viewers. Uh, anyway, uh, good luck out there and have fun.